UH, yeah, right, left, yeah, slightly used, but yeah, obviously I had to return these to him. Um, but yeah, I get to try out the Hilti. I was hoping he was going to include the handle. That'll make things a lot easier for me. Um, and then a older Black & Decker uh, variable speed. Oh, it is reversible. Drill. So I'd like to try this one out too. Um, what does it say? Zero to five fifty RPM. That should actually be comparable to the Milwaukee if I take off the right angle drive. So, anyways, I'm gonna get these hooked up and test them out. Now, let's see. There we go. So, made some improvements to the tool dynometer. I added in this bar here to um, help support the drills against. So, uh, so they something to hang on to. Um, let's see. I've also put in this shim here so that the wheel doesn't rotate um, until I'm ready. If it wobbles, it messes up the initial readings for the encoder. So that should be all reset. And now, um, let's see, off we go. Sent. I was really impressed with the uh, Hilti. This drill had more torque, or actually very similar torque to the um, to the Milwaukee right angle. However, it spun probably twice as fast, if not more, um, and put out the same amount of, or well, slightly more torque than the Milwaukee right angle drill. So, um, yeah, and. So yeah, really a pretty impressive drill. For some things, this Milwaukee's probably still better because you just got a longer, bigger thing to hang on to. That's one thing about this drill is it feel like at full torque you need more, more drill to hang on to um, than than just this shorter, smaller form factor. Because um, this one, your more moment is from there to there. So if you're drilling with a big auger bit. Um, It'd probably be much more pleasant to use than this one. Um, they probably make a longer handle for it, um, and if they do, th that's what you should use if you're going to drill with a big auger bit or something like that. Um, or use one of these. They're, this is probably cheaper. Um, although I don't, I don't know what the prices are. But anyways, this is a pretty darn powerful drill. It's a nice drill. Um, I'm not going to take it apart or anything. Um, but yeah, it seems well made, well made, fits in the hand nice, and by golly, it's got a lot of torque. So um, yeah, if somebody else wants to send me a, um, a drill to, to test, I'd be happy to. Um, I'm actually getting this sent back to him fairly quickly, so um, so this part of the torque tester needs to get redone here. I guess maybe not. So when I designed this, so this part of the torque tester needs to get redone, uh, or the the inertial dyno. When I designed this I thought, oh well half inch shaft, you're not gonna twist that. Um, should be no problem. Um, however, um, I messed up and didn't quite make it long enough or have it centered quite right. So the hex on this side is only 7 16 which is a little small, and really there's not enough of it. So that's starting to get rounded off. Um, 
from using the, the higher torque drills and also you have to push in hard um, so it, it makes it difficult to use so I'm gonna make a new shaft and probably get bigger bearings um, might as well go up to um, three quarters or one inch something like that so we have results from the inertial dyno um, I got sent a new Hilti UH650 drill as well as a Black & Decker I guess it'd be from the 80s maybe black handle uh, before they sold out to DeWalt um, nothing special and it, it shows it was interesting sort of baseline um, at the low RPM it has very little torque compared to the rest of them it does max out supposed to max out around 500 RPM um, during the test it made it up to about 450 so um, let's take a look at the beginning RPM curves of these drills see initially they all start off fairly similar um, the black and deck except for the black and deckers way lower these guys are all clumped in pretty closely the 1920s black and decker the Ryobi the Hilti the all metal black and decker and the Milwaukee despite that the um, the Hilti starts off a little bit behind I'm not sure why that is um, it really takes off and just is on a completely different tra trajectory than the other uh, drills. We scroll down and we look at the torque curves. We can see why. Uh, initially, it's a little bit behind the Milwaukee as far as torque goes, and um, but it catches right up. And part of this initial torque drop could have been my fault because I didn't have the drill held as secure as I could have because I the way I had to hold it with the um, the wheel and the the socket slipping off the hex and all sorts of other stuff so part of that's my might be my fault um, but it still held its own and once we got going it really took off um, and was way more torque in the higher ranges than the other the other f five drills you can see the the newer black and deckers way way behind just the beginning part once again that weird jog at the beginning with the milwaukee ahead and then the hilti just bringing it home i'm not sure what these oscillations are in the data first i thought they might be rpm related like the uh, wheel being unbalanced or the encoder wobbling or something like that however that doesn't seem to be the case because at a given RPM you'd think that it would have the same frequency of wobble if it was um, an unbalanced wheel or something of that sort um, and that doesn't seem to be the case because as say the um, the Ryobi, which shows up on top here, the frequency of its oscillations at 400 RPM is way higher than what the Hilti is at 400 RPM. So it's more like, um, as the data sample size increases, but that doesn't really make sense. Um, anyways, I'm going to work on trying to get figure out why this is as fuzzy as it is. Um, I've done some progress in smoothing it out, but it's still not perfect. And if we look up at the RPM curve, you can see that oscillation in it, um, the little little peaks. So, yeah. So, yeah. That that's what I'm I'm trying to figure out what's causing those. And once I figure that out. Um, I, hopefully I'll be able to get better results. Like right now, if I try to calculate horsepower using these, using the wobbly torque numbers, it really gets all over the place because you're going just another step deeper into the wobble, and it gets kind of all jittery. So I would like to do horsepower at some point, but right now we're, we can just look at the torque curves. 
I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.